You want to support Roller Martin Unfiltered? Be sure to join our Bring the Funk fan club. Every dollar that you give to us supports our daily digital show. There's only one daily digital show out here that keeps it black and keep it real. It's Roller Martin Unfiltered by going to rollermartinunfiltered.com. You can make this possible. All right, so Bitmari, the leading pan-African blockchain company in partnership with BitHub Africa, will host its second annual block Black Blockchain Summit from September 9th to 10th in Washington, D.C. at Howard University. The theme for this year's summit is reparations and revolutions. The conversations will be held around the role of blockchain technology in building economic independence and manifest wealth creation. Here to talk about that is Bitmari co-founder Sinclair Skinner. How you doing, Sinclair? Great. Thank you so much for having me. Oh, great to have you here. So tell me about what's going on at Howard. All right, awesome. So on Monday, uh, we start at 8 o'clock at uh, Howard University. Uh, the address, I think, is 2201 Georgia Avenue. We have uh, the AU chairperson coming. We have uh, members of Congress talking about issues related to our community. And we also have technologists coming in who have backgrounds in uh, blockchain technology, Bitcoin. How do we use technology to, to make the changes? Instead of waiting for 2020, for elections to happen, how can we empower ourselves using technology to take control of our own lives? So that's the, the context of the, the event. And we have e economists talking about it, as well as technologists on how we can use this, this uh, technology called blockchain to allow us to uh, hopefully change some of these issues. So can you give us like a quick sort of 101 on exactly what this is? What is blockchain? What is Bitcoin? And how can we use it as a community to help ourselves? All right, so it, it's, a, it's a technology. A blockchain literally means a blocks of data that are connected together, okay? And these blocks of data, just like when we take pictures, pictures are like data. That's mm -hmm. why we can send it. If you don't like it, I mean, there was a time you had to take a picture and get it developed at, at the you know, corner store, wait and see if your eyes will close those out. We no longer use that. We now have data that can be transferred, saved. Well, in blockchain, it's encrypted data. That data can't be counterfeited. It, would make a, it wouldn't make a good exchange of value to use your pictures. Why? Because they can be copied. Mm -hmm. So then, you know, you would know, okay, do you have it? Or, but with this data is encrypted, and if you possess it, no one else can duplicate it. So now if I want to convey uh, exchange of value, I have this data that's encrypted that no one can counterfeit, and I'd exchange it with you. So I'll say, I'll give you this amount of data if you give me this in return. That's what Bitcoin is. It's really just people, it's just data that's being created that's encrypted to allow us to do exchanges. But also in those blocks, you can save any other type of information. So when it relates to like one of our panels is uh, 40 acres and a mule, mm -hmm. talking about land and how do we control land. Well, in this same data, in, you can actually have like, you know, land rights. You could actually have a oh, deed wow. of property so that if somebody ever tried to undermine you like the government, there's a place where you can store it safely that's not controlled by the government. So right now what we see is this, these technologies come out, but we as a community aren't involved early on. We mm -hmm. become big users at the end, make these folks super rich, but we're not the ones orientating this information. Just as much as we think about, like, you know, I went to Howard University in Tuskegee, but Howard, you couldn't get a, a, a taxi to come pick you up. Right. You had to go walk down, you know, towards U Street or what have you to get a cab. We thought in the engineering school that it was a political science problem. But when they came out with these Reicher applications, in many ways, it made a lot of that racism obsolete. Let me mm -hmm. say it another way. We thought it was going to be, you know, go to the taxi commission to stop them from not picking us up. But here comes a, a uh, technical uh, application using GPS and other technology that now gives people more flexibility in their choices to get picked up for, for the transportation. Well, th they didn't do that to, 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 to take away the humiliation we were receiving by not being picked up. These were folks in technology that sought an opportunity. We're saying that if we start at the beginning of these technologies, even though blockchain is still super early, less than really 10 years old, if we're there, we can actually leverage these technologies to help our community. Mm -hmm. Electricity was a technology. A lot of people were used to using oil lamps and said that electricity was too scary and it never worked. Well, electricity worked out. Mm -hmm. Same thing with people, horse and buggies. They said the car, the, the, the horseless carriage would never work. It's crazy. You couldn't get <laughs> gas anywhere. Well, now, you know, a little over 100 years later, iPhone is only 12 years old. So, so much of what we think is going to be the way it is, it changes so fast. Mm -hmm. So, if we really still think, uh, in the case of Bitcoin, that people are going to pull out paper money 
or use credit cards with that cassette. Remember the cassette player with the little strip? Oh, the yeah. back of the credit card, that brown is the same cassette. That technology is like from the 40s. Mm -hmm. Wow. So, so to think that we're still going to use those means. So when we start talking about our community and where we want to take it, we need to also have a context of how technology can be used to help us get there. And, you know, one of the things we started off in with our company was allowing people to send money to Zimbabwe. And, and may uh, Mugabe rest in peace. You know, and that's a big issue, mm -hmm. sending money in our community. Right. In black communities right now, they charge us more for our money. Right. Well, that's not because the technology is not there. It's because they have a predatory business model. Right. Well, we can change that. Of course, with policy changes, but we also can empower ourselves to use technologies that allow us to make those changes. I love it. Lauren, did you have any questions? I see you taking copious notes. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> this money, I tend to do that. So, you know, obviously we got Cash App and we got all these PayPal. We have all these payment apps, these new payment apps. So why would blockchain be better? I'm talking, you know, in money transferring. Why would a new technology or Bitcoin be better than what we see in like the basic technology that that typically is around paper money? Well, I, I I've heard you speak out here before. So first of all, you're brilliant. Thanks. <laughs> Thanks. Thanks. You're Thanks. awesome, and Thanks. I, even this Thanks. last clip. Thank anyway, you. humbly, um, all those systems have a third party, and there's a concept of disintermediarization where we take the intermediary out of the equation right. mm -hmm. to allow peer-to-peer. -peer, again, I'm an engineer. I'm not very good with this. I got, stuff, I got That middleman's taking a percentage. The, the middleman is not only taking a percentage, they're controlling the transaction. Mm -hmm. They actually can say, you know what? We're closing your account. We can say, they can put hurdles that now control our lot, and it's our money. Yeah. They're not adding any more value. Absolutely. The, the, the days of them with the horse and get, protecting your money with a gun, those days are over. This is all behind a, a cloud somewhere. So we literally are paying folks to control our money. And again, going back to reparations and revolutions, this is about self-determination. Yeah. It's not about violence. This is not about us being victims. No, we're not victims. We're taking control. Mm -hmm. There are tools out there that will empower us, allow us to take control. So instead of waiting for PayPal to clear, allow me to do mm -hmm. this, if I have Bitcoin, just to use an example, I can do transactions anytime, 24 hours, anywhere in the world without asking for their permission to allow me to access my value. So again, though, the people though are, who are in blockchain are mostly Asian and, and white men. Mm -hmm. So again, you know, I'm on a panel with, with beautiful, mm -hmm. wonderful sisters. Y'all are the ones that need to be making this. If, we're gonna, if we want this thing to be right, mm -hmm. it's gonna be more black women gotta be involved. Because mm -hmm. y'all bring life. Y'all don't, mm -hmm. this, this thing, we have a slogan that says, Satoshi is black, and I brought some t-shirts. I mean, <laughs> <laughs> I'll take one. So, so humbly, the, the, the person who actually created Bitcoin, they don't even know who it is. Mm -hmm. So the, the, the name, the pseudonym they used was Satoshi Nakamori. Mm -hmm. And then so some people say, well, it must be somebody Japanese. And I said, well, wait a minute. Now, if you're trying to disguise yourself, like Dr. Seuss really wasn't a doctor, okay? Right. His name really wasn't Dr. Seuss. So if you're trying to disguise your, your, your identity and you're Japanese, you wouldn't pick a Japanese pseudonym. Hello? Right. Okay? It probably was a sister. Right. And she was able to walk away, create something that now people are benefiting all over the world. And there's different variations, not just uh, Bitcoin, but there's a host of Ethereum, a lot of different things out there. Mm -hmm. And we're also going to be telling people how they can use it for wealth creation, how you can use this technology to benefit financially. And also, there's scams. If any of these things are scams, and we want to make sure that people are aware, the Black Blockchain Summit, uh, dot com you just go to the website, check us out. You want to volunteer, come on. We, we're ready to go. It's, it's on Mondays at, and, and Tuesday, Howard University. We'll have a little reception where we uh, are um, highlighting the Congressional Black Caucus staffers because it's Black Caucus a weekend. Mm -hmm. I mean, we coming up, and we want to, there's a lot of, like, people who do the grunt work of uh, policy making, and they're celebrating their 40th anniversary. So we said we'll have, like, a reception invite them out and we have this big economist named Derek Hamilton oh, and he's going to be speaking Derek Hamilton yeah. and his birthday is that Sunday so we said we're going to get a cake so y'all want to come <laughs> cut some cake with Derek we're going to cut some cake for you bro and then we're going to make sure you know everyone else has some food for thought also oh that sounds right and and I and I feel, and what really resonated with me was you mentioned how other technologies have control of your money. Uh, I, I have, I'm an entrepreneur. I know many of other 
friends who are entrepreneurs that do a lot of transactions through PayPal, for example. And if you have some sort of event or some sort of, you, you actually do what you want to do, sell a lot of goods, like that's unusual, an unusual amount, they will hold onto your money. Uh, merchant accounts will do that. They'll hold onto your money for literally months, potentially, before you have access to it. So are you saying that something like this could help to alleviate problems like that for entrepreneurs? Yeah, absolutely. So you know, our company now is, has this thing called ilovedblackpeople.com. And the whole I love black people is we're actually creating like a global black Yelp or global green book. And we're now able to connect. It could be a sister in Kampala, Uganda. It could be a sister in Chicago, United States. Now they can connect by through a platform that's, and the platform is based on not just black owned business, but black friendly. So you could right. be in Denmark, Copenhagen, and you get sick. It's gonna be hard to Google a uh, non-racist doctor. Right. But it might be a Mongolian woman that all the black folks go to and they say, man, she treats us with dignity and respect. So now you can use her. Now, how do you do those transactions? We can now, we have the technology that can link you know, using your, your mobile phone, the internet, and now with blockchain technology, we can connect ourselves. Black people represent about 1.5 billion people. So put it in context, Europeans are about 680, 600 million to about 800 million. Mm -hmm. We're about the size of China, but we've been fragmented. Right. We're all spread out. China, right, right. and you go to China, you realize them ain't the same people. Like, there's different tribes. Right. They might all speak Mandarin or Cantonese, right. but them some different. You go one right. part to the other. Well, black folks, again, we've been separated, but right. we literally are very much the same people, but we don't have access. Now, we have technology that can link you that you don't have to have your money held, and you can actually work with folks you want to work with. And we say with this technology, you know, one of the biggest issues has been racism for 500 years. We mm -hmm. have technology now that we can change that. We don't have to wait for somebody to stop being racist. We can create mm -hmm. a platform where we don't, you know, give me the violence, not going to eliminate racist, but we can actually eliminate your racist transactions by giving you a platform where you can, almost like a black Yelp, verify that these folks are black friendly and, okay. and, and or black owned okay. and do your transaction and give you the support for your business as well as give black customers which there are more black customers than black entrepreneurs. And, and when we pay, right. they're not giving us a discount when they, they're racist. We're paying full price to get Absolutely. fall around the store. Or if you go someplace <laughs> and they say, this, the hamburger's really good here. Well, the hamburger might be great, but if they racist, they're not serving you on time. Right. So there's little humiliations that mm -hmm. we don't have to, you know, we got to stop normalizing. And again, I'm here with your sister. It's just mm -hmm. like sexism. The, We've normalized things too much. Right. We have the we're the adults in the room now. We don't have to go for that. Even if we agree on disagree on something, we don't have to go along with it. You go your way, do your thing, but I'm gonna go here where the people are happy to see me. Right, right. Absolutely, I love it. So yeah. remind us once again where people can get more information. Okay, they can go to uh, I love excuse me, uh, blackblockchainsummit.com. That's black blockchainsummit.com. Uh, the event is on Monday. It starts at 8 o'clock in the morning. We still have, you know, availability. Come check us out. We also need volunteers. You want to, it's a good way to meet some people as well as learn a lot about what's going on. And it's going to be on Monday, uh, the 9th to Tuesday from 8 to 6 on Monday with the reception. Come check us out and eat, cut some cake. And then on uh, <laughs> Tuesday, we have it from 8 to 2 o'clock. So definitely appreciate the opportunity and, uh, uh, rest in peace, uh, Robert Mugabe. I just had one more shout out. Absolutely. Well, thank you so much for joining mm -hmm. us. I learned a lot. <laughs> All right, folks, back to our Mark Unfiltered video in just one moment. All right, so Life Lux Jazz is the experience of a lifetime delivering top notch music in an upscale destination. This weekend long event is held at the Omnia Day Club Los Copos, which is nestled on the Sea of Cortez in the celebrity playground of Los Copos, Mexico. The Life Lux Jazz Experience offers the ultimate gateway for discerning jazz aficionados by pairing an upscale international destination with luxury accommodations, fine haute cuisine, top shelf libations, breathtaking golf, exhilarating spa, health and wellness options, and much more, while showcasing some of the biggest names in entertainment. The second annual Life Lux Jazz Experience continues to build upon its success and heritage with jazzing around Los Cobos, a celebrity expansion of, accomplishment, of accomplishing its goal of sharing all the finest the destination has to offer, including daytime excursions and mini concerts, including the spirit of jazz gospel brunch and jazz sunset cruise. Confirmed guests are comedian actor Mark Curry with Gerald Albright, Alex Bugman, 
Paul McMidon, Incognito, Pieces of a Dream, Kirk Whalem, Average White Band, Donnie McClurkin, Sheila, Roy Ayers, Tom Brown, Ron Ronnie Laws, and Ernest Quarles. For more information, visit the website lifeluxjazz.com. Now back to your Roland Martin Unfiltered video.